Hi everyone and welcome to video 2 in this 3 part video series. Going over a typical PPP model, now this PPP model is available from Opus 2 for download. It's called the Opus UK PPP Operating Model Template. So let's just break up that title. Even Opus is a UK firm. They are project finance advisors and you can go and have a look at them online. When you do so, you can download this model for free. So UK, so I mean, it, it sounds silly. Obviously, it's for the UK. That's actually quite important because each jurisdiction has different sets of laws, even things such as tax and depreciation. So different jurisdictions might have different accelerated uh, depreciation regimes to try and promote renewable energy projects. So in some countries, you actually might be able to depreciate assets over three years. So it's something just to be aware of. PPP, what is that? Well, that's a public-private partnership. And if you're not sure what that is, I've written a blog post on that on the financialmodelingpodcast.com website. And if you go into the blog there, you can actually see I've written a blog post just explaining what a PPP is. Operating model. So that's also quite important, right? So this is a financial model, sure, but it's not a financial close model. This is not a model used to fund a project. It's an operating model template. So it's a template that we can use to monitor assets that are perhaps in construction or in operations and really producing revenue. So it's not a financial close model. And if you're not sure about the difference between a financial close model and an operating model, I strongly suggest that you go and you have a look at my blog post on project finance and complexities of project finance modeling, where I break that down. So let's dive into the model. All right, so per the last video, we go into the model, go into the legal disclaimer, we can give it a read and we click accept because we accept the disclaimer. Let's go and actually view the model. So what I'm going to do is just break down a couple of the worksheets. So firstly, this is the summary worksheet. And what it gives us is it gives us the project name. It tells us that we are looking at the base case. So we're not looking at any specific scenario. We can see that that actually links to the cell scenario name. We're looking at the base case. We're not looking at an upside or a downside. Zero audit fails and zero warnings of 88 total tests. So we have 88 checks in the model that might be checking things from balance sheets to whether the debt service reserve account is fully funded. And we have zero fails, which is great. The model is working. So project timing. So so when do the actuals end? So that might say, okay, we might have a certain period of actuals over in this model. So that would be until today's date, till we know the actuals. And then it's maybe a forecast until the concession end, which is some point in the future. What's the IRR? What's the shareholder IRR? There we'd calculate the shareholder IRR. Over here, we've got the cover ratios, which are forecast cover ratios. We've got our minimum senior debt service cover ratio annual debt service cover ratio historic, so over the, the previous year, annual debt service cover ratio forward-looking, so over the next year, and our loan life cover ratio, we've got the date of the min and the average. And what I typically add into my models as well is what is the covenant, and then maybe a percentage above the covenant, so you can just see, or below the covenant, hopefully not, but you can just see how close we actually are to, that, to breaching that covenant. And, and by the way, all of these say N, A, and zeros over here because we actually haven't put any numbers into the models. We're going to do that in video three. Uh, subordinated debt, what's the coupon on the subordinated debt? Again, it links to a cell, but we haven't actually input that yet. Senior debt, what's the interest? What's the swap rate? So what if we um, hedged our base rate at and what is the margins? And our margins might change over time, perhaps during construction, but higher as I explained in the previous video, because it is more risky, the, the project is more risky during construction, a lot more can go wrong once it's operating and producing revenues. We can perhaps lower the margin or get a lower margin from the bank to take into account that the, the risk has been lowered in the project. Two tranches of debt in this model. So we've got senior debt one, senior debt two. No, two tranches, but both senior. So they both count for towards the, the senior cover ratios, both considered senior debt. Then we have our reserves. So we've got the debt service reserve account, one year looking forward profile and split over the quarters because it, it will not increase, decrease, especially if we've got sculpted debt and it will both increase and decrease over time. And our maintenance reserve account, what it looks like a forward profile. So let's actually go, um, this model is great, it gives you a bit of a, an intro into what you should do on all the various sheets, it's got a user guide. And we, here we have our inputs, right? So this is the inputs worksheet and let me just go and open up all of these rows over here. So what this is, is you can actually see it's got different scenarios over here. So over here is where we go and show that we are looking at the base case scenario and if I Follow the cell, I use this tool, you, I'll, I'll talk about it on, in a blog post as well, REXL, I absolutely love it. 
So we can see that where is it pulling base case from? It's pulling it from this scenario number and it's actually over there. So here I can go and run different scenarios. So for example, this is the base case and this was a high case. Go and put in two over there, we can see that it becomes a high case. Just something to note on, on some of these models, project finance models, sometimes they do have their, their formulas set to manual, so do go and change it to automatic if you want to see how it updates. So interestingly enough, this actually comes with its own uh, tab over there and we can actually go and click those various buttons and see what they do. So what this will, do, what, how this will work is, um, if I go and choose one, which is the base case, it reads all the inputs from column H. If I go and choose two, which is the high case, it reads all inputs from column I and so on. So let's stick, stick with the, the base case. Project name and, and let's call it, uh, we can go and call it wind farm. So this is our, our wind farm model. And now if I go back to the summary, by the way, we can see it's, it's wind farm base case. Um, if, I, if I put a two over there and went back to the summary, we can say we are now looking at the wind farm high case. So just go and put it back to the base case. So this is our parameters over here. So we've got a model start date and a concession end date. Debt service frequency. So we can actually go and, and choose a frequency over here and we can see how that works. Maybe we, you know, if we frequent our debt um, every three months. So it shows the months between the debt service dates. So every three months, maybe it's calling, maybe it's, it's every one month. Debt service month. So we can actually go here and say, in which month do we service the debt? So here we've got operating cost names and we can go and actually rename all of these. What I like about this model as well is if, if you go into the user guide, like any well-built model, um, is it actually explains how it does all the various calculations. So you can go through the user guide. It's very comprehensive. And it even has a table of contents for the user guide. And if I go to the quick start, it explains what all the different worksheets are. But what I'm actually looking for is the guide of what all these various cell colors mean. And if you go to the home tab, you can see the styles. So we can see that they've made a yellow cell an input um, and you know, good and bad checks, etc. So cell styles, I absolutely love. It's very easy to then see that, that all of these yellow cells are inputs that we can change. Whereas all of these cells that don't have a yellow background, we can see that they've got formulas in this. We should not go and change those cells. Indexation, quite, quite key. So when you're talking about a PPP model, how the revenue typically works is that it's indexed to um, some inflation rate. So it increases on an annual basis, or whatever the case might be, per inflation. Here you've got the indexation base month and the actual inflation rate forecast. And you can have it um, broken down over time. This just has one inflation forecast for the, for the entire project life. But we can actually go and break it down if we think that the next five years, for example, will have an inflation rate of 2% and thereafter 1%, whatever the case might be, we can go and put it into the model inputs. Revenue, so we, this is, a, this is a, a model that just has one amount that it's receiving and, and perhaps you can have a percentage of the revenue that's being indexed. So maybe only 50% of the revenue is actually being indexed and will increase over time with inflation, the other 50% won't. Operating cost profile used, uh, I like this as well. Um, so you can actually go and choose different operating costs profiles within your different um, scenarios. So you can go and say, I want to use a certain profile. Working capital, so payments, receivables, payables. So you can actually put in your days there for working capital as well. And that's really useful because that might indicate to you if you've got a specific shortfall, might indicate to you that you need a working capital facility. Uh, and the financial model will actually show that to you if you've got certain periods where, hang on a second, there's clearly a shortfall here, but then the revenue comes in at a later stage you may, might need a working capital facility. That, that rate, uh, that reclaim delay. So this is showing you, you know, how long do you have to wait until you get the VAT back that you're busy paying. So you can reclaim the VAT, but it will take some time. And if that's also a long period of time, you might need a VAT facility to allow you to pay the VAT. And then the VAT facility is almost like a revolver. You pay the VAT and then when you reclaim the money comes back into the facility. Are you revenue subject to VAT? Which of your operating costs and life cycle costs are subject to VAT? What's your, your tax loss utilization? So quite interesting there from a tax perspective. Senior debt here, you've got your senior debt maturity. So when does your senior debt mature? Your interest rates, your, your base rate and your margins over time and when the margins end. So you can have your margin ratcheting down or up, whatever the case might be. Likewise for senior debt too. 
subordinated debt. So this is subordinated debt that just has a coupon, but your subordinated debt might amortize as well. So you might need to structure your model slightly differently. In this case, it's just paying interest and maybe it's a bullet repayment of the subordinated debt. Debt service reserve account. So, so what does that look like over time? Maintenance reserve account and cash reserves. So sometimes we, um, or banks rather, require projects to you know, have some cash or liquidity reserve account just to just to cover any liquidity requirements. Yeah, you can see you're building up a financial asset. Uh, and here we say the ratios. So you can say, what is the lockup for the ratios? So is our debt service cover ratio lockup at 1.3 or 1.4, whatever the case might be, you can actually put it in over here to your inputs. Here I've got another input sheet and what this input sheet is basically all the time-based assumptions. So this is the inputs non-time-based. So it's the inputs that are static over the life of the project. Uh, and again, you know, we, we mentioned it over here. Inflation, you might actually want that as a time-based input. Maybe you, exp you have an inflation forecast and it will change over time. So if I just expand the inputs here, the, the time-based one, we can see we've got operating costs over time. And, and what you might want to do is have a real profile, a nominal profile, where you just take your real costs and you inflate them to show the nominal costs. You've got the life cycle cost, you've got your senior debt repayment profile. So you might want it sculpted. I sculpt my debt slightly differently to how this project model works, but it's just useful to see how different project models work. So you've got your, your debt repayment or sculpting profiles for senior debt one and two. You've got your tax rate over time. That, that, that's interesting. Why, why I find that interesting is because you might say to yourself, hang on a second, a tax rate is a tax rate. How can it change over time? Well, that's actually not always the case, especially for PPPs. You know, sometimes the government to incentivize PPPs, they actually give them tax breaks or they say, you know, for the first two years or three years, you have a 0% tax rate and then a 10% tax rate and then ratchets up, whatever the case might be. Then, as we said, this is an operating model and not a financial closed model. So over here, we actually have how our inputs actual, which has got all the time-based inputs, but actually what were they over time? So you've got our revenue, what was it? The operating costs, what were they over time? And the various financial positions, we can actually input that over time. What were they? What, what were their current assets? What was the maintenance reserve account, the debt the reserve account, our receivables and cash? What were those balances? So we input our balance sheet and our income statement. So we have an actual view. And obviously this would, you know, for each new period, we go and input those numbers and slowly our model becomes more actuals and less forecast as we move forward through time. So that's how all of the inputs work to this model. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how the model actually works when we start putting in some numbers and we're going to have a look at all of the workings and output worksheets. So join us in the next video, which will be part three of three in this overview of a project finance model, in this case, specifically Opera's UK PPP operating model template available for download from their website. Be sure to check out the Financial Modeling podcast for more financial modeling news, tips and tricks, and also sign up to our newsletter, the Financial Modeling Roundup for a monthly review of all the latest financial modeling news and also you can hear what I'm up to in my world of financial modeling.